Hey, Cross Viewers, uh, Pastor Kyle here with another Q&A with Pastor Kay. Um, today, I think uh, I would like to talk to you just about Bible translations, why we have so many stinking Bible translations, um, which one I would recommend to you, and maybe just some other fun facts that maybe you didn't know about with Bibles, because uh, the Word of God is the center of uh, what we study, what we preach, what we teach, what we see, um, how we live. Um, so it's important for us to understand uh, maybe some of these different elements about how we got our Bibles. So without any further ado, um, just a few things that are important in the different Bible translations. Obviously, you probably know, especially if you have like the Version app, that you can go in there and pick different translations. And there's like 60 to pick from. I, I don't know what it is, but there's a, there's a bunch of different kinds of translations to get. So you may have asked yourself, why is that the case? And you might even be, if you've read multiple, you might even be saying something like, why does one seem to say something different than another? Does, does this impact the authority of God's word? Does it impact the truthfulness? So I hope I can clear some of that up for you um, and try to keep it simple at the same time so that way uh, it's easy to understand and maybe even get you set up to where you could explain it to someone else if they have the same question. So I get asked this quite frequently. So the first thing that we have to know is that uh, Bibles were not originally given to us written in English. So we received the, the, the earliest copies of the scriptures are in Hebrew, um, a little bit of Aramaic, and Greek. So every translation that we have today came from those original writings. So, and we have tons and tons and tons of copies of those original writings. So many copies of the originals, in fact, that um, we can do a process called critical evaluation or um, critically studying uh, you know, the, the manuscripts of the New Testament to actually really be 100% certain of what the original manuscripts are saying. That's why we can put so much trust in God's Word. The trick is, after that, it's been translated into different languages. And this is where we get into a little bit of trouble sometimes. So, especially with different languages, it's really hard to always have a one-to-one -one translation. So, uh, for example, in Greek, you might have one word that means plant, but in English, it might, it, we might be able to translate it in three different ways. We might be able to say it's a plant, it's a flower, or it's just a shrub. So those kinds of decisions, when we're looking at the original manuscripts, deciding how we're going to translate it, that impacts how we put it into an English Bible. That doesn't mean that we don't have the Word of God. It doesn't mean that we don't have the right words. It just means that, especially as time changes, We've updated them and translated them in a way that we can read them and understand them without having to know the original languages. That's a little bit of history, and I know that's very brief. There's a lot more we could go into detail on, but um, unless you're really interested in studying New Testament manuscripts, the original languages, or something like that, that's probably the best answer I can give you within two minutes. So moving on from that, the question might be, well, then why do we have so many different kinds of translations? And really that boils down to what is the theory of translation that the people who put together that particular Bible, what did they use? And there's really, I think, three different kinds of theories. There's um, Bibles that are more word for word or what we might call literal translations, even though it's really impossible to get an exact literal because of the differences in language. Um, there's Bibles that are kind of more what's called dynamic translation where they combine trying to get literal word for word, but also adjusting and adapting so that it's more readable. And then there's another translation theory that would just be kind of more like paraphrased translation, which in that case, they're not exactly going for word for word equivalence. What they're going for is readability, pretty much purely readability. So today I wanna to give you three examples of those three different kinds of translations, uh, the three favorites that I have, and then maybe even just one warning about picking a Bible translation and how you can do that safely. So my three favorite translations are the NLT, the CSB, and the ESV. So the NLT is actually one of the first translations that I started reading when I read my Bible for the first time. This is a uh, more of a paraphrased translation. It's not necessarily word for word, it's more thought for thought. It's a great translation for reading through, reading easily. Um, you'll still really be able to get the message of the gospel and the message of the scriptures through an NLT. It's, it's, it's a really good, easy read. You can get this on version, I think, obviously. Um, the other one is the CSB, and this is kind of that middle of the road version where they try to match up literal word for word with thought for thought idea. Um, it does a really good job of giving you the message of the gospel, um, the message of the scriptures, 
trying to give you as much literal reading as possible without making it hard to read. So the CSB is a great version as well. And then I think my favorite version, um, and this kind of falls into more of the literal word for word category, is the ESV. Um, there's others that, that are literal as well. I think the NASB would be another one that's very literal. The difficulty with the more literal ones is they can be a little bit harder to read sometimes. It's called wooden translation. It, it's just difficult. I don't know if wooden is supposed to be related to hard or not, but it just means that sometimes when you read it, you can look at it and not necessarily um, understand the, some of the different words and terminology because they haven't been updated to modern English. So it can be a little difficult. I think about like maybe the King James Version. There's a lot of people who still love the King James Version although some of the language can be a little bit outdated and difficult to read. In, this, in a similar way, the literal translations can be that way, although they're really, really good. So here's my suggestion on what I think you should do for reading your Bible. I think you should pick one that you're gonna use on your daily reading. So if, you, if you're doing a Bible in a year plan, which I highly recommend, um, pick one version and read that one primarily. However, here's the trick. I think you should also, especially with texts that are difficult to understand, you should look at the different translations and say, maybe if you're normally reading from like an ESV, which is more literal, and it's harder to understand sometimes, if you come across a passage that's difficult, maybe jump to the NLT or the CSB and take a look at it there and see if they've said it maybe with some different language or paraphrasing that can help you understand the word. The most important thing that we want to do when we're reading the scripture is understand what God's message is to us. We want to know it, what it means in context. We want to know what he meant when he wrote it originally and what it, can, what it means and, uh, and how it can apply to us today. So getting something you really understand is vital and important for you to be able to read the Bible effectively. One warning though, I want to give you one warning. There are some translations out there where the translator or even the team of translators come from a particular perspective, and that can really influence the way that they write this, the words. And it can influence it to the point where it almost makes it no longer really the Word of God. That can happen. Um, with these particular Bibles that I've recommended, they have um, very scholarly groups and teams of people who have come together, studied and poured over the scriptures, and tried to be objective about what God's Word says. But that is not always the case. Um, as we know, sometimes people um, take advantage of uh, opportunities to, maybe it's just about making money, maybe it's about uh, putting their name on a book, um, whatever it is, sometimes people will uh, put their ideas into the scripture where it doesn't belong. So I think one translation that I would recommend you not read, simply because I think this is the case in that translation, is the Passion Translation. I'm not a fan of the way that they've, that they've updated the language and used it in a way that maybe doesn't make sense. And we'll actually, in the, in the information of this video, we'll give you a link to a video done by a person named Mike Winger. And he's done a whole review on that particular translation and some of the dangers that are inherent in there. Now there's probably many others that are in like U version that you could get a hold of that aren't gonna be necessarily as helpful. I would stick to the, to the ones that have been um, written and translated and poured over by um, trustworthy scholarly men and women who have dedicated their lives to interpreting and translating God's Word. These are very safe, very reliable translations. So I hope in maybe 10 minutes or less I've been able to answer uh, as much about this as possible. It's kind of a complicated subject. If you're really interested in learning more, uh, you can always let me know, send me a message, um, and I can maybe find some resources to send your way. Uh, otherwise, if you can, uh, do me a favor, just like and share this video and send us your questions so we can keep answering things that you guys are thinking about in your daily walk and as you're discipling and as you're talking to people. Because I know questions come up randomly when you're in conversation. So let me know and I would love to try to help. Until next time, thank you and have a great week.